This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 869 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. horse people coach jen here and thanks for tuning in to horse tip daily today's tip is an excerpt from the horses in the morning show jumper rider diane little joins the Hit'em crew to talk about warm-up ring etiquette and the ground rules for that mysterious hunter warm-up circle and we'll get right to our tip after this nutritional minute from kentucky performance products spooky tense edgy unfocused If these words describe your horse, a calming supplement could make training easier and riding more fun. Trouble-free paste from Kentucky Performance Products is scientifically formulated to support proper nervous system function and help your horse maintain a more confident, focused, and relaxed disposition. Trouble-free contains a blend of ingredients that support your horse's normal nerve cell and muscle function and is available in a convenient 80cc oral dosing syringe containing two 40cc servings. Ask for Trouble Free from Kentucky Performance Products at your local feed and supply store or go to www.kppusa.com. And now, on with today's tip. (laughs) All right, well, our next guest is on the line is Diane Little, and she's got her jumping tip of the month. Diane, of course, is from Peace by Peace Farm. And Diane, we say good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? I am good. How are you doing? We're doing great. We actually have a listener question for you this week, and this is a question that, you know, I have a bunch of students, and you take them all to the horse show for the first time, and for some reason, sometimes you forget to go over this at home, and then you're like, okay, do a warm-up circle. And so the question actually is, is I see some riders do their warm-up circle. This is when they're going in for their their test, uh, for their jump course. And they circle up to half of the arena, weaving between jumps as they go. And then others do a tiny little circle right near the first jump. Are there rules about how big and or where you should do a warm-up circle before a hunter round? And that question was submitted by Beth Ann. Uh, So, Diane... What do you think? So it's kind of, it was kind of a hard question to answer because all rings are a little bit different and set a little bit different. Um, but I agree with her that, that it can be very confusing and that I actually was just at a horse show on Saturday and my kids were confused about if they should do a circle, if they shouldn't do a circle and whatnot. So, I mean, number one, it just depends on where the course starts in that, you know, where the end gate is. If you walk into the end gate and your course starts on the other side of the arena, you're going to trot directly across the diagonal or directly up a quarter line, pick up your canter down at the other end, and then keep going. So in that situation, you wouldn't make a circle. You would just trot them across the arena, either quarter line, diagonal, whatever makes the most sense. Um, but if the, if the jumps start kind of towards the end gate, then absolutely yes. You, you have to, you have to make a circle. Um, I, 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 I would say the correct way would be to kind of use that, that, that like top quarter of the arena. You don't want to go all the way to the, to the middle. You don't want to be like one big huge circle using half of the ring. You want to have a nice, um, you know, round circle so that you can get that nice medium canter going to approach your first jump. Okay, so is there are there rules where at certain in certain arenas you could get eliminated for doing the wrong circle, or is it pretty crystal clear before you go in? I think it's pretty crystal clear before you go in. I think the hardest part is is kind of you know there's a jump here, there's a jump there. You know which track makes the most sense. I think that's where people get thrown off. But as long as you kind of look at the ring before you walk in, usually there's a pretty clear marked track that you can take in order to get to your first jump. Okay. Okay. So kind of do what the person in front of you did, kind of thing. Yeah. Unless I think that's the best way of going about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So just watch the rider in front of you, and if you're the first one of the day, sucks for you. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I think I think sometimes it's so easy to to overthink those things and to get nervous about those things. And I'm always just like, relax. You know, you're gonna you'll be fine. We'll talk about the plan. We'll look at the arena, see how the jumps are set. I'll give you a good idea of where to go, and then you know, continue for your course. Oh, they they set these rings in order to make it so that everything can be smooth. So I'm sure when you look at the ring, you'll find a nice smooth track. Yeah, sounds good. Now the other the other question to me that's related to this when you talk about warm up is, okay, I'm an eventer, and when we have our warm up fences outside of the arena, they're all flagged. Red on the right. There's a flag yeah. on the right that's red, and then there's a white flag on the left, and that tells you the direction to jump it. What the hell do I do in a hunter ring? Yeah, to warm okay. up. I was glad that we got there because from that question, I actually was going to go more to the warm up, warm up than a warm up circle because I think warm up, warm up is much more complicated than than yeah. the circle you have in the arena. Um, in the hunter jumper world, there are sometimes they have the flags up depending on the horse show, but many, many often times they do not. So number one, you want to teach everyone left hand to left hand. That's just kind of an easy rule to follow in that when you pass someone, your left hand should be able, I mean, you shouldn't be this close, but the idea is that, you know, if you gave them a high five, it would be your left hand to their left hand. So that gives you a good idea of at least which side to go on if you guys are coming at each other the same direction. When it comes to to the warm-up jumps, you know, I do encourage the kids to call out their jumps. Absolutely. You know, sometimes you might feel a little bit ridiculous, but it's better for people to know where you're going than for someone to end up in front of you. And, and you know, it's a really, I think it's actually kind of, it can be a good experience for, for the younger kids, for, for whatnot, the people that I haven't shown that much, in that it, it teaches you to ride with a little bit of a softer eye. It's so easy in riding to get fixated on, one jump or fixated on your horse's neck, you know what I mean, or fixated on just one thing when really some of the best riders are the ones that are able to kind of keep that softness in their eye. They can see what their horse is doing. They can be aware of what's around them. They can kind of feel kind of what, what where they're going to need to be in order to keep themselves, you know, away from other people. So I actually think it's a good experience, and and the most important thing is to, number one, try to keep that soft eye, stay aware, and also be vocal. Tell people where you're going. You know, there's nothing wrong with trying to kind of tell someone the track that you're taking. Right. No, there's 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 nothing better than being in a – first of all, keep your eyes up, kids. That's basically – she says soft eye, I say look up. Uh, don't stare at the back of your horse's head. And the other thing is, yeah, the chaos around a warm-up area when they're like, vertical, okay. So just – you have to listen to everybody else, too. So keep that soft eye and pay attention and listen to everybody. When are they going to go, Diane, to the – only jump fences one direction thing. I mean, how long does it take? We got to get back. Um, it, it, I mean, if there is no, you know, I've, I've been in a Grand Prix ring and, and there's no flag. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there, isn't, there isn't really necessarily one level where it's like, boom, there's flags up. Um, I would say as the level gets bigger, as the jumps get higher, you know, they, they tend to have them more. But in general, there's really no rule. Eventing, they're so good about having the flags up. That's the way you jump it. Hunter jumper world, it's really head or miss with whatever show you go to. And, you know, the shows, I think, do it if they only have, like, one schooling ring for three rings. They put the flags up because they know they're going to be bombarded with a ton of riders all at once. But if they have a couple schooling rings, one for each ring, they tend to be a little bit more lenient on which way you can go. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, listen, if you guys have any questions for Diane, where can people get a hold of you to ask you these questions? Um, If they go to my website, www.dilittle.com, there's there's a um, kind of a questions page where you could write it in. Or um, my email is dibinswanger at gmail.com, which if you guys, I'll give it to you guys if anybody um, wants to shoot me an email, they can always they can always contact you and, and give them that email address. 
Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Well, P- Diane Little from Peace by Peace Farm, what is your next big show coming up? Uh, we are, let's see, that's a good question. Uh, we are going to the New Jersey Horse Park in a couple of weeks. We're going, I think, um, Woodage at the New Jersey Horse Park runs in a couple of weeks, so we're going to go there. I'm hoping to go down south over the winter. You know, it's getting colder, so the shows are dying down a little bit, but we're staying as active as we possibly can. Cool. That's fantastic. Well, good luck. I hope you do get to go south for the winter. I'm sure everybody uh, listening in New Jersey is jealous because uh, we do have a, a large contingent in New Jersey, and they're all, like, going to hide in your trailer, so you may want to look for stowaways. Um, <laughs> but, Diane, thank you very much. And we will talk to you again next month with your jumping tip of the month uh, for November. Well, there you go. All of the questions you were afraid to ask answered in under 10 minutes. To listen to more tips on everything from barn care to websites for horse people, you can tune in to horsetipdaily.com and look for the topics drop-down menu on the left. If you love listening to the Horses in the Morning crew, putting in their two cents on everything horse, along with fascinating interviews from around the equestrian world, tune in at horsesinthemorning.com every weekday. And now you can have all of your favorite horses, horse radio network shows with you wherever you go with our free horse radio network app for iPhone and Android. Just go to your app store and search Horse Radio Network. And don't forget to support our sponsors here on Horse Tip Daily because they make these podcasts possible. This podcast has been brought to you through the generous support of Kentucky Performance Products. You can ask for Kentucky Performance Products at your local tack and feed supplier, or you can visit them online at kppusa.com. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily. Oh.